science, it will never be considered go away. Cool. Good for Australia. Yeah, too bad we can't get some of that here. Yeah, thing is, though, Australia is like half awesome, half crap. Yeah, they're real big on the DRM and things like that, but... You get Nintendo games like years after they come out. Yep. Their Game Boy Advances don't work with other people's Game Boy Advances. It's from what I heard from an Australian guy. I don't know how true it is. But there's an Outback. There is an Outback. There are rough and tough people out there. There's great sports. Yep. It's clean. It's play- pleasant to live in. The lot weather's nice. A lot of skin nice. cancer. A lot of skin cancer. You got to watch well, out. That's just because the, the sun. Yeah. You know, but my grandparents tried to move there. Actually, well, you need mad skills to move there. Yeah, they won't just let you move in. You have to prove that you have a skill that they need, and that you'll become gainfully employed, and that you don't have any diseases, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I actually heard a guy talking today about moving to Australia. He's like, it doesn't matter how much money you have. You need to have a special something. You yeah. Need to be like a rocket scientist. Or something, because they respect science there. Yep. The U.S., as long as you're not Mexican, <laughs> they'll let you in, it seems. Oh, oh, or Arabs. They don't like the Arabs in it. Yeah, anymore. they don't like them so much. They don't like people who look different. Yeah. So they're okay with a lot of the white aliens, because they look the same. Oh, no, British people are coming to our borders. Oh. Canadians. Oh, they don't like Canadians, though. They just don't know you're Canadian until you say something. Yeah. Eh? Canada's cool, though. I love Canada. It's just cold. Yeah, now we need a passport to go there. I've actually been watching some Dudley Do-Right. I love that. I don't like Dudley Do-Right so much. I was more of a fan of the uh, Fractured Fairy Tales. Fractured Fairy Tales are good, but you gotta you got to love the, the Snidely Whiplash. The, the one that I just watched was so great, because Snidely Whiplash is like foreclosing on these mortgages. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand. So, uh, yeah, we got on a tangent. I mean, the point is just that we can't argue about science here because there's no argument. There's either something's true or something isn't, or we don't know. And there's no way we could ever disagree, so we can't come up with any way to get banter. We could probably try to get some sci-tech guests who, you know, maybe know some science we don't know or Uh. are dumb and dumb and dumb and dumb, and they don't understand what we just said. They don't under so then we can you know science yeah. them or another angle we could take is we could go the informative route and pick a topic that we know a lot about and talk about it. I don't know how unboring that would be. Yeah, the thing is also is that we're not experts in any particular area other than computing. Yeah, uh, at least as far as science. I mean, we know more science than the average person. But you don't know enough about any one science. Like, we couldn't give you a lecture on um, particle physics. Yeah, like, but I we could talk know... a lot about quantum physics, but I couldn't talk about it in a way that... There are other people who could talk about it better. I could talk about quantum physics for maybe about 10, 15 minutes. I'd just tell you everything I knew about it, and that would be it. <laughs> and that wouldn't be exciting or anything. Cause... Wasn't there a time when you didn't believe in atoms? Hey, you know, that was before you could see them. And I, I didn't say, you know, all I saying that was that Atoms were a model for describing the particles that made up everything. And we knew that everything was made of smaller bits. Mm. But we didn't know for sure that it was it was protons, neutrons, and electrons well, until actually, we saw them. Yeah, we did before we saw them. How did you know? It was only a model still, that worked. It uh, wasn't no, actual... No, it wasn't a model. It, 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 that sort of physics, as opposed to quantum physics, didn't come out of the model and then discovery ideology it came out of the we discovered these particles because we could see them we could detect them coming out of things when certain reactions happen yeah but you detect particles you don't you know it's it's like really you can't ever see an atom because it's you know photons bouncing off of something is how you see yeah it's always a problem we should try to fix that Uh, that's impossible to fix you can't see you can only represent based on data yeah, but, you know, it's like, all right, we, we keep trying to use vision. We keep trying to detect things by bouncing a photon off of it and then detecting the no, photon. No, we don't do that at all. We try to detect it using other much more advanced sensory apparatuses. Yeah, but how do those I. things work? I've always heard about these sensory things they use in accelerators. I've never actually heard about how they work or, or anything. They're all very, very different. Like uh, a neutrino detector, one way to do it is they have a big tank of water. Pure, pure, pure water. And if a neutrino goes through the water... The odds are it'll hit one of those water molecules and make a, a flash. Make it, it actually flashes? Flash. Like you can see it flash? Yeah. 
Wow, that's pretty cool. Or like, uh, I could just look at this bank tank of water and I'll see like. Psh- I don't know if humans can see it. I think they need a camera to see it. I don't know how fast or or powerful these flashes are. Uh, that would have been uh, much cooler if it was a real, like a big, like a flash bulb. <laughs> that you know, like you take pictures. Or like when they discovered uh, positrons and all that sort of stuff, electrons, negatrons. They would set up photographic plates, and then they could see the spirals as the particles flew away from the reaction. Oh, I remember seeing it. But, I mean, how do they think of this to begin with? Science. <laughs> but, I mean, who thinks of that? Hey, I'm smashing atoms here. Let me um, put a big tank of water next to it and see if anything happens well, in the I tank think of the water. I the process was more, huh, every time I collide these two atoms, it, a certain result happens. I wonder what's happening. But how can they detect the result and know what it was before they made the detector? Because they had other detectors that detected larger scale events. Like, if you run two atoms into each other, you can detect that energy is released. Huh, energy was released. Where did the atoms go? And then you set up a thing like, well, I'll put this thing around it where if if an atom hits it, it'll react in a certain way. And I know it reacts that way because I fired atoms at it and it reacts that way. So I'll put it around so I'll see if the atoms bounce off each other. Hey, they had never detected an atom. The atoms must have disappeared. So what did they turn into? Or where did they the go? The energy. Maybe. Actually, they turned into energy and particles. Well, you do math to figure out how much of it turned into energy. And then the rest obviously did not. Something like that. Yeah. Because, you know, e equals mc squared and such. That's actually not the equation, you know. I know. It has a lot. Well, it's actually there's the... the there's that is another the version where it's like m equals no, something over. No, no, no. Over. E equals mc squared is... is is a representation, but is a simplification of the actual equation, which is significantly more complex. Well, there is the whole thing is is, is, is a, it's a large theory of relativity which has many equations encompassing it. Well, e equals m c squared is just saying that either time or speed of light has to be constant. Einstein made the speed of light constant because that made his equations awesome. He could have done it the other way, and it would have worked just as well, but he chose this way, and. He was smarter than I was, so well, I'm going What it really it. says is that, um, you know, mass and has energy. a whole lot of energy in it. <laughs> uh, no, it more just says that mass is energy. It is energy, but it is a whole lot. In fact, it's C squared a whole lot. Yeah, which in a grand scale isn't that In a grand much. scale isn't that much, but in a human scale, that's a lot. I mean, you know, if you got all the energy out of like a piece of wood, all of it, all C squared of it, uh, it's a lot of energy. You yeah. could probably power a city on that for like a week. Yeah, but you know, keep in mind entropy. You really can't get that energy. Yeah, and it sucks. You know, the whole thermodynamics. See, that's something we can do about science. If we can't argue about it, we can complain about it. Yeah, stupid thermodynamics. I mean, friggin', if I burn a piece of wood, I can't get all the heat. I mean, come on. I burnt it. I, it's all mine. Where's it going? <laughs> it's my wood. Friggin'. Laws of physics, stealing my fire. Lisa, in this house, we follow the laws of thermodynamics. Oh, I forget the quote. Oh, oh, <laughs> busted, owned, pooned. Whatever. I know it's from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a whole thing recently about math in The Simpsons, how hard it was for them to get these math jokes in because... I remember the first one. Remember way, way back when Bart went to the genius school. And there was the RDRR. RDRR. Party har har. Yep. Well, I remember laughing at that. I was real little when I saw that episode. And then I took AP Physics. And in AP Physics, we were calculating a Gaussian surface. And we were calculating the Gaussian surface of a donut shaped object. And then I realized that the uh, operative part of the equation we were using was RDRR. And then I realized that, up. that it was the shape of a donut. And I, I laughed for, like, at least a minute straight. And everyone was looking at me. And Simpsons, then I said, donut. I said, R-D-R-R, hardy har har. And they're all geeks, and they all got it. And then we didn't. We just stopped working all day and laughed about that. Yeah. It was great. There was a, I, I don't know this for 100%, but um, there was a tale of, the, of a mathematics teacher at a high school in the town over from mine, where some uh-huh. of my friends went, to Fairfield High School. And they told a story that there was a teacher there, and he was a math teacher. And when his problems arrived at an answer involving the number 69, he would put a tally up above the, <laughs> of the board. 